Jaroslav Kopinski from the Center for Theoretical Physics of the Polish Academy of Sciences. He will tell us about on the conformal transformation between two anisotropic fluid spacetimes. Okay, thank you. So <clears throat> this talk is based on my work on the necessary conditions for the existence of the anisotropic fluid metric uh, in the conformal class and on the restrictions on the conformal factor if you have two anisotropic fluid metrics in, in a conformal class. So this was partially motivated by a recent results by Pavel about the conformally flat models in conformal cyclic cosmology and can also be viewed as a generalization of the obstructions to conformal Einstein metrics. So I'll start with a bit of motivation. <clears throat> so firstly, I will talk about the conformal cyclic cosmology model. Then I will move to the obstruction, the dis discussion of the obstructions to conformally Einstein metrics, because I will later uh, generalize them to the, to the anisotropic fluid metrics. Uh, so then in the next part of this talk, I will describe what is an anisotropic fluid metric or an anisotropic fluid spacetime, and then discuss the obstructions to conformally anisotropic fluid metrics. And since I partially interested in conformal cyclic cosmology, I will also talk about the case where we have two conformal metrics, uh, two anisotropic metrics in the conformal class. So I will use Throughout the stock, I will use abstract index notation. So for example, the, an element of the tangent space will be denoted by a superscript, an element of cotangent space by subscript with obvious generalizations to higher order tensors. And since, since I'm a physicist uh, and working in general relativistic scenarios, my manifolds will always be four dimensional with the metric of the signature minus and three pluses. <clears throat> So I'll also use a uh, notation of symmetrization and anti-symmetrization brackets from time to time. And those can be defined uh, uh, in a way visible at the bottom of this slide. Okay, it's a couple of more definitions. So uh, if I'm talking about the space-time, I will always mean four-dimensional di four manifold M with the metric G, which satisfies Einstein field equations visible here in one. So we have on the left-hand side the Ricci tensor, RAV, the scalar curvature R, and a term with a lambda, which is called a cosmological constant. And for the purposes of this talk, I will always assume that this constant is positive. <clears throat> so on the right-hand side of one, we have the source term for the Einstein field equations, which is called the energy momentum tensor. The other useful definition is the definition of asymptotically the sitter space time, which uh, is basically a requirement that there exists a conformal compactification of space time, which was already mentioned uh, in Roth's talk, but let, let's go through the, all of those points. So <clears throat> uh, the space time M of the metric G will be asymptotically the sitter if there exists a manifold script M with the metric script G and the boundary script I or scry for short. <clears throat> uh, secondly, there exists a smooth function omega such that uh, it's positive in the interior of script M and is zero with non-zero gradient on the boundary scry. Thirdly, there exists a default morphism from this uh, space-time M to the manifold script M such that the uh, space time is mapped into the interior of script M and the pullback of the metric script G lies in the conformal class uh, of the space time metric G with the conformal factor being just this smooth function omega squared. <clears throat> so the next condition is uh, each node that each node geodesics of the space time M acquires two distinct endpoints on the boundary scry and I will denote the the, the set of endpoints in the past as I minus and call this set past now infinity and the set of uh, endpoints in the future by will be noted by I plus and I will call this future now infinity. Last condition is that the energy momentum tensor so the source for the Einstein field equation vanishes in the neighborhood of, of uh, future now infinity I plus. <clears throat> 
So as I said, <clears throat> this definition uh, is basically a requirement that there exists a conformal compactification of our space-time M. And because uh, the, the assumption that the energy momentum tensor is zero in the vicinity of the future null infinity, and because the cosmological constant lambda is positive, this, hyper, this uh, hypersurface is a space like hypersurface, uh, which will play a role, uh, a crucial role in the conformal cyclic cosmology model uh, in the next slide. <clears throat> okay, so the conformal cyclic cosmology is a model by Penrose. Which it, and it can be summarized uh, in those few points. So first of all, uh, it assumes that the, our, our universe consists of a sequence of building blocks, which are called, called here eons. And each, each of these building blocks, each eon is a conformally compactifiable space-time with a space like past and future null infinity i minus and i plus. <clears throat> and the matching of two consecutive eons are performed just by gluing together a future null infinity of the previous eon with the past null infinity of the next eon, as visible on the, the, the picture here. So there's one additional condition, and, and this is that the, 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 the vial tensor vanishes at those matching hypersurfaces. Okay, so since I want to focus on the details of this conformal cyclic cosmology model, I will now only talk about two consecutive building blocks or eons. So let's say that we have two space times uh, m hat and m check with the metric g hat and g check or g wedge. <coughs> and this, this notation is actually follows from, from Penrose's book. So uh, I will assume that the, both of those space times have the same conformal extensions, uh, conformal extension, which means that there exists a ma matrix script G and two functions, omega hat and omega check, such that uh, the space time metric can be recovered uh, from them as, in, as is visible in two. Moreover, uh, there exists a manifold uh, script M such that it can be viewed as a composition of uh, the space time M hat, M check, and their common boundary, which is this boundary along those, those space types are glued together in the, the CCC model. <clears throat> and of course, this boundary, as I said, is a future null infinity of the previous eon and the past null infinity of the pre present eon. Okay, even though now even though I assume that there exists uh, the, the, that those two space times have the same conformal extension, there I still have some freedom in the conformal rescalings. And I can use this freedom to impose the something which Penrose called a reciprocal hypothesis, which is just the assumption that the product of those two functions, omega hat and omega check, is minus one, as in free. So if we look at free and go back to the, the relation between the, those free metrics given in two, we see that actually the metrics from previous and, uh, and present eons can be, are related uh, as in four. So uh, we see that the metric from the, the present eon is fully determined by the metric from the previous eon. If if, one, if we can provide a unique way to, to define this conformal factor omega hat. <clears throat> now, this problem, uh, which I just described and can be summarized in equation four, is, can be viewed actually as a simplified question which was posed by Brinkman uh, around 100 years ago. And this goes as follows. So we want to find the metric script G and some function uh, omega hat such that uh, the two metrics which can be obtained from those two objects, so G hat and G checked, solve the Einstein field equations with some uh, with some energy momentum tensor. <clears throat> but 
actually this this problem can be also viewed in an alternative way which i will follow later on so we can assume that we have two space times so two solutions of einstein field equations m hat and m check uh, with the let's say that they have the energy momentum tensor of the same type like an isotropic fluid and we can look uh, what this assumption how this assumption restricts restricts this function uh, omega hat which is in, in phi but before <clears throat> i will move to this problem let, let's quickly go through the necessary conditions for conformal einstein spaces so in order to do that, let me briefly recall some of the, some of the tensor definitions that are useful to work with uh, when dealing with conformal transformations. And those are, those, are, those are Skouten, Cotton, and Bach tensors. So first of all, we know that the Riemann tensor can be decomposed into its traceless part uh, C, which is called the Weyl tensor, as visible in six. And the remainder is composed of the metric G and the uh, uh, scout and tensor, which, which played a role in, in previous talks. But uh, let me recall that it can be defined, it is basically trace corrected Ricci tensor and can be defined as in equation seven. So this now the scout and tensor can be used to define the cotton and Bach tensors, and those definitions are visible. Uh, in eight, so we see that the cotton tensor A is just a, uh, the anti-symmetrized anti derivative of the Skouten tensor, and Bach tensor is a second derivative of Skouten composed with the Skouten contracted with the Weyl tensor. <clears throat> so where, I, where are those tensors useful in and dealing with conformal transformations? Well, because of their relatively simple conformal transformation rules. So let's say that now that we have two metrics in the conformal class, which I'm calling here again, G hat and G check. But now instead of the conformal <coughs> factor, from now on, instead of the conformal factor, which is just some function squared, I'll use a conformal factor E to two psi. So if we have uh, those two metrics as in nine, then we can, uh, it can be computed in a relatively easy way that the, for example, the Weyl tensor with one index upstairs is a conformal invariant and Scout and Cotton and Bach tensor transforms as in the last three equations of 10, where of course, uh, if, a sem if a tensor has a hat over it, then it corresponds to the metric G hat and the same thing holds for, for the uh, wedge over the symbol of the tensor. <clears throat> so what's, uh, what's interesting here is that uh, the, if we look at the last equation from 10, then uh, we see that the condition that the Bach tensor vanishes is a conformally invariant uh, condition. And, uh, and which, which was actually explored in the previous talk because uh, if I recall correctly, the Pfefferman Graham tensor in dimension four, which we are in right now, is exactly the Bach tensor. <clears throat> okay, so now the, uh, yeah, so now let's go to the conformal Einstein spaces and the, the obstructions to the conformal Einstein spaces. So I want to assume now that one of those metrics in the conformal class is uh, the Einstein metric. And by that, I mean that it's rich tensor is proportional to the metric, uh, where because of the Bianchi identities, this proportionality factor C is actually a constant as in 11. So this can be uh, transcribed to the condition that the scout and tensor P hat is also proportional to the metric. <clears throat> so if you have this uh, scout and tensor of this type as in 11, we can immediately compute that the cotton tensors A and the Bach tensors B vanish in that case as in 12. So now if we assume that the, now that we have another metric in the conformal class G check, which is 
related to jihad by a conformal factor e to two psi, then uh, uh, those uh, conditions 12 impose a conditions on the cotton and, and Bach tensors on the for the metric jihad visible in 13. And those conditions uh, will be important uh, in a minute because uh, as we will see uh, they for the conf uh, if some metric is conformal to the anisotropic fluid metric the, the those conditions uh, appear again uh, at, in a more generalized form so now i want to move to those special class of metrics uh, which are called the anisotropic fluid metrics and in order to do that uh, let me talk briefly about this <clears throat> about the source for the einstein field equation which characterizes this kind of space times. So the source, uh, so the, this energy momentum tensor is usually written in the form visible in 14 here, where we have two scalar fields, rho and P, which are just the density and the isotropic pressure of the fluid. So the one form U is a one form which uh, comes from the some uh, unit time like vector field U which is, uh, can be viewed here as a four velocity of, of our fluid. And the last, uh, last piece on the right-hand side of 14 is responsible for this anisotropy here. So I will call it the anisotropic pressure tensor. Okay, so <clears throat> If you're working with uh, fluids uh, in, G in general relativity, it is useful to uh, to to, uh, to rewrite re to work with the equations written uh, written with the help of the quantities which are related to the fluid, which can, and which can be obtained uh, in a special in a special decomposition of the covariant derivative of the fluid for velocity u. So let me go through that here. So the basic rule here is, uh, is that we want to decompose uh, the covariant derivative of the fluid for velocity into parts which are uh, anti-symmetric, trace, uh, symmetric, trace-free, and trace part, but not with respect to the four-dimensional uh, metric G, but with respect to the projector on, a, on the distributions orthogonal to the uh, fluid for, for velocity u. So the first definition is the definition of the projector on those distributions, and this will be denoted by h. And now this projector can be used, as I said, to define uh, firstly the, the anti-symmetric part of the covariant derivative of u, which uh, will be denoted by omega and is called the vorticity tensor. <clears throat> the trace part denoted by theta, which is called the expansion scalar. The trace-free pa symmetric part, sigma, which is the shear. And the last part is the acceleration denoted here by u dot, which is just the covariant, covariant derivative of the fall velocity in the direction of this, this vector. So generally, we can uh, uh, we can uh, write that the, the full covariant derivative of u can be decomposed into those, those tensors and vectors and scalars, uh, which were defined in a previous slide, uh, visible uh, here in 15. And now we can use this, this those quantities, uh, for example, to <clears throat> Uh, to decompose the continuity equation for the energy momentum tensor, which is which follows from the Einstein field equations and is just the condition that T is a divergence free tensor. So <clears throat> in this setting, this, this equation has uh, only two independent components visible here in 16. And actually, there is a physical argument which says that the first of those equations from 16 can be interpreted as a rate of change of entropy of this, this systems, we, uh, the system of anisotropic fluid. And because we want the entropy, the rate of change of entropy to be positive, uh, we want the last term on the left-hand side 
in the first equation of 16 to be positive, to be negative. And this can be obtained in a straightforward way if we assume that P, which was the anisotropic pressure tensor, is just po is proportional uh, to the shear sigma with the proportionality factor called the viscosity parameter and denoted here by small lambda. So, we'll, so I will assume 17 from now on. <clears throat> okay, so now <clears throat> I will assume that we have uh, we, that we have an, the anisotropic fluid space time, uh, which I will call again m hat with the metric g hat. That I will restrict this anisotropic fluid with some uh, additional assumptions, which will be justified in a moment. So first of all, I will assume that the vorticity of the fluid omega hat is zero, which is uh, which is equivalent to the statement that there exists a foliation of space times of space-time m with leaves orthogonal to the fluid for velocity u hat. <clears throat> the second restrictions, the second restriction that I will make here is that the acceleration is zero and that the pressure rho and uh, the pressure p and density rho are constant functions on those leaves sigma orthogonal to the fluid for velocity u hat. So those, those three assumptions are made here uh, in a way that that uh, makes the the shear sigma hat and the, the obstruction to conformal flatness which means that if we additionally assume that sigma is also zero then uh, metric g is uh, the conformal flat metric <clears throat> so in the the, the present scenario we can uh, we, we can compute that and the contract the, the, that uh, we can compute scout and tensor, and from this we can deduce that the contraction of of the cotton tensor with fluid for velocity, and the contraction of Bach tensor with fluid for velocity and projected uh, in the second index to the direction orthogonal to u is zero. So now if we assume that we have another metric G check in the conformal class of this anisotropic fluid metric with the <clears throat> new unit vector field U check, which is now the unit vector field with respect to this new metric G hat, G check, as in 19, then 18 will uh, impose the, con the conditions on the cotton and Bach tensors of this new metric G check visible here in 20 which are exactly the generalization of those conditions from conformally Einstein metrics. <clears throat> okay, so now I want to focus on the first equation from 20, because this, uh, as we will see in a second, can be decomposed further if we take into consideration that the vial tensor, which appeared in, uh, in 20, can be decomposed further into its so-called electric and magnetic parts, <clears throat> which uh, are denoted here by E and H. And, and then they are just defined with the use of the of contraction of the Val tensor with the, the four velocity with the, the vector U check and the contraction of the dual the dual vial tensor with this uh, with this vector as in 21 and from this those two definitions we see that both e and h are traceless and they vanish if they are contracted with this the this vector u check so now this equation uh, with with cotton tensor of the metric G, G check can be split into two independent components visible here in 22 and 23, whereby D I denoted a, a gradient projected on the hypersurfaces orthogonal to the, to the vector U check. So now, <clears throat> By looking at first, by looking at equation 22, we see that with one additional assumption on the electric part of the value tensor E, 
we can <clears throat> we can solve it for this projected gradient of the conformal factor c and then put this uh, this 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 definition this this projected gradient of c in a 23 to get the the Con to, the, to get the necessary condition for the metric to be conformal to the anisotropic fluid metric, which is independent on the of the on the conformal factor, and this assumption is that uh, the assumption about invertibility of the electric part of the Val tensor E. So I want to uh, uh, assume now that there exists another tensor E tilde tilde such that when contracted with the electric part of the Val tensor E is proportional to the Kronecker delta as in 24. So now if such tensor exists, then, exists, then we can just uh, contract it with equation 22, solve for this projected, gray, uh, projected part of the gradient of C, which was done in 25, and then put this projected gradient into second equation. Uh, into equation 23 and the ultimate result is the equation 26 where we see that uh, the left hand side uh, does not have any any conformal factor on or is derivative so this is like a, this can be viewed as a so left hand side of 26 can actually be viewed as an obstruction tensor to the to the uh, conformal anisotropic fluid metric Okay, so now since I'm all, uh, as I said, I'm also interested in the con in this conformal static cosmology model. I will now assume that this second metric, which was in the conformal class of the anisotropic fluid metric, is also a spacetime metric. So it solves the Einstein field equations with the source of the same type. So in other words, that. Uh, the spacetime M check with the metric G check is also an isotropic, an isotropic fluid spacetime, and it has a with the four velocity of the fluid uh, <clears throat> U check, which appears before as a conformally uh, as conformally related to this uh, first and uh, first fluid vector U hat as uh, and and can be and was defined as in twenty seven. So this assumption that I have second anisotropic fluid metric uh, means, for example, that we have second uh, energy momentum tensor, which is now denoted by T check as in 28. So we have a second fluid with second set of second set of quantities, uh, rho check, P check, the, the fluid for velocity U check and the, and the anisotrop anisotropic uh, pressure tensor. Uh, which which is here uh, replaced with this uh, with 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 a shear sigma check. And now, because of this assumption that those two four velocities are related are conformally related, we can immediately de deduce that, uh, as is visible in twenty nine, that the, this new vorticity omega check is is also zero that the shear sigma check is conformally re related to the old shear. And uh, most importantly, that the, we have a non-zero new, new, uh, new, non new acceleration of the fluid U uh, check dot, which is uh, given by a projected part of the gradient of the conformal factor C, which, uh, which re relates between those two anisotropic fluid space types. So now uh, I will assume I will make one additional assumption here just to mimic this new anisotropic fluid with, uh, with the old one, and this will be the assumption that those the, the new pressure rho p check and new density rho check are also constant functions on the hypersurfaces orthogonal to the the fluid for velocity u check. So now if we take everything that is shown here in the consideration we can uh, so we can combine 27 29 and this assumption about the, the 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 new new pressure and new density are constant on hypersurfaces sigma together with the new continuity equation for the uh, energy momentum tensor and derive equation 30 from those 
from everything that I just said. But if you look closely at 30, we see that it can only be satisfied if this projected part of the gradient of C is, a, uh, is zero, which means that this, this function, the conformal factor is also a constant function on the hypersurfaces orthogonal to, the, to the, this new fluid for velocity you check. And, uh, and, and then in that case, the evolution equation for this, this uh, conformal factor, which is uh, a key problem in the conformal cyclic cosmology can be derived from the, the transformation rule for the projected part of the Ricci tensor and is visible here at the bottom of this slide. So we see that it contains uh, fluid quantities from both space times, so we have uh, rho hat, p hat, rho check, p check, and uh, two cosmological constants, um, uh, lambda hat and lambda check. And yeah, so that was the, the main result of my paper. And this talk was based on the following papers. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>